Yeah, okay. 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 Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, December 11th, 2018. And I'd like to remind you to turn off your cell phones as this meeting is being recorded. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Yes, thank you, Chairperson Granado. Mr. Cassio? Ms. E Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Vice Chairperson, Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson, Mrs. Granado? Here. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative, Eden Fritz Aguirre? Here. All okay. present. Thank you, Ellen. And the board invites our high school career counselor, Mark Danaher. Would you come on up with your high school students and start us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, and you guys are going to be called up in a few minutes. Thanks a lot. Oh, as a matter of fact, you're going to be called up right now. <laughs> Mr. Emmett, we have a staff recognition tonight. Come on we, back, Mark. We do. We do. As you know, we've implemented our strategic plan, and one of the tenets of our strategic plan is to really take our students outside of school and bring school out into the community. Um, one of the things we've been able to do with our career coordinator, Mark Danaher, is make connections into the community and into the business world. One of the connections we've been able to make is a connection with the Travelers Insurance Company. So um, we have a couple of students from Weathersfield High School um, with us this evening, along with Mr. Danaher, to talk a little bit about the actuarial day at the Travelers. You guys come up to the podium. Uh, uh, overall, so I guess I'll just start off uh, with the beginning. Um, the day was honestly probably like a really good day. It gave me a real insight on like what it is to be an actuary. And then um, Travelers did a great job of not only showing the everyday aspects, but also how to get into the field and what we need to do as students to uh, strive to become actuaries. And uh, they also did a good job of helping us see like other careers that were kind of like actuaries, but it gave us different options. So maybe if we didn't like the actuarial uh, department, we could do uh, a couple other fields too. That mm -hmm. I felt that was really good. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, uh, continuing on that, that is really great because um, it, it really reinforced my decision of wanting to become an actuary. Because it's one of those, um, it's not like an electrician where you know exactly what you're going to do. It's not one of those common jobs, I guess. But through doing that, I was able to know what I was doing was right for me. And that overall it was something that helped me out and something I wouldn't have been uh, able to like understand normally through school. Great. Any, Any questions for them? Well, how many of you went to there? I know I see the two of you. Was there a group? There's six, right? There were six of us. Six yeah. of them. Wow. And there was a larger crowd of, um, of students there from other schools also. Yeah, there were about 60 students there from different schools. Uh, we were there from about 8 o'clock until 1.45. They got a chance to learn analytics, um, actuarial, and uh, business intelligence. And they actually got hands-on activities where they got a chance to experience to kind of, we were trying to figure out insurance rates and how did that affect it, how many people were going to stay subscribing based on low risk, uh, moderate, and high risk. And so we went through and looked at that game and to see it each time as different disasters occurred or different things didn't occur, how it affected your overall profit, and how you're going to forecast your rates for the following year. So it was an excellent opportunity for them to see that go through. Um, they got a chance to meet and network with different individuals. And so Liam actually has a chance to work and be mentored with one for a DECA project. 
that he's doing that awesome. uh, we were there. So he's going to be following up with that um, professional as we go through as he works on his project. Excellent. That's great. Any questions? Was this yes. the sort of career you saw yourself heading into before this experience? Uh, yeah. Yes and no. Um, it really, I was deciding between this and engineering. But when I went there, and I knew I had like a lot of fun with it. I knew it was something that I'd like more than engineering, at, at least now. Great. That's great. Uh, I'd say that. Uh, I kind of had my heart set on it to begin with. And then I think this just helped to like reinforce that idea that it was something that I did want to do. So it was a great experience. Did you know what it was really all about before you went? Uh, I had a little bit of an idea, but I'd say that this uh, experience helped to kind of give me or broaden my horizon on what everyday aspects were. And then we got to see um, how not only you have to have mathematical skills, but you need graphing and computer skills because a big part of their job was to uh, present their data once they collected it and then put it into a form that everyone could understand. Hmm. So. And they got a chance to meet the young professionals that are going through the leadership program under the actuarial and analytics. So they met people that were either two, three, four, five years out and could really kind of talk to them how it was kind of getting into it and the different levels getting ready for the different exams they had to do and, and talk about the support like travelers and other companies will provide as they go to take the different level exams. That's wonderful. Anyone else? John, welcome. Oh, just a Kevin? comment. Um, you know, you're both very fortunate enough that you kind of got this exposure to the actuarial field, and you, you enjoy it. It's something that you could maybe maybe see in your future. But um, as Mr. Danner probably knows, you know, the more exposure that students can get, the better. I mean, because if you don't like it, great. You know, <laughs> early on at a young age, that that's something you maybe you're not going to want to pursue. So you don't have to go into go towards a certain path in college. So the more experiences you and your classmates can get in terms of all the different fields that we can expose you to, the better. So thank you again for at least yeah. for trying it out. Thank you, Mr. Danner. That's great. And you know, the board is never far, or this is never far from the board, is our strategic plan. And right on the strategic plan, it says that one of our goals is to introduce students to as many careers and hopefully find their passion. Um, but again, um, I have heard the criticism, you're not pigeonholing these students, are you? And that's the exact opposite. We're trying to get these students exposed to as many things as we can. So thanks. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Mark. All right, we'll move on. Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting on November 27, 2018. Anyone see any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. Second. Uh, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. Also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our special Board of Ed meeting on November 29th, 2018. Are there any corrections to those? No. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. All right, a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And I'll abstain. Anyone? Abstain. So Do no. we get enough for that one? Okay, good. Those minutes are approved. So now, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we limit it to five minutes. Okay. Michael, you have communication to share? I do. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, lead communications this evening with a special thank you to Ed and Melissa Pine for their support of the Weathersfield Public Schools. The Pines operate uh, several Dunkin' Donuts franchises in the Weathersfield Rocky Hill area, and they have graciously donated $500 to each elementary PTO, to Silas D. Middle School, as well as Weathersfield High School as part of the hashtag Giving Tuesday. This uh, gift was greatly appreciated, so Mr. and Mrs. Pine, thank you very much. The uh, Weathersfield Transition Academy holiday event occurred yesterday over at the Pitkin Center. Um, we hosted five other transitional academies from across the greater Hartford area. We had uh, over 100 students and staff over at the great. Pitkin Center uh, for a, a great day filled with music, uh, lunch, games, and camaraderie. Uh, transition services are certainly vital to these young adults, and these programs provide a critical skill set on which these students can build. 
Um, I'd like to say congratulations to Kim Bobbin and members of WEC uh, for receiving a $5,000 grant from the Liberty Bank Foundation. The funds will go to help Weathersfield develop a plan for intergenerational community-based family resource center. I had the opportunity to attend the event with uh, Kim Bobbin at Capital Community College last week as she was presented with the grant award from Liberty Bank President Chandler Howard. Uh, today I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Danaher and Craig Dresick from Goodwin College at Weathersfield High School. Uh, the purpose of this uh, meeting was to make a connection with the Weathersfield Public Schools and Goodwin College. Um, I provided Mr. Dresick with a tour of our manufacturing space at Weathersfield High School and uh, frankly I'm looking for uh, Goodwin College to perhaps provide us with some staffing and how can we partner together to develop opportunities for our kids. And so very exciting meeting today. This is one in a series of meetings that we've had. We're talking about opportunities to compare curriculum. So Goodwin will be sending me their curriculum and I'll have a lot more coming forward with regard to this uh, Burgeon partnership. A reminder to the community that uh, council will hold a meet and greet with the town manager finalist candidates. This will be taking place next Tuesday, December 18th, 2018. That'll be 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Keeney Memorial Cultural Center. Uh, welcome and candidate introduction will begin at 6.45. A work group meeting was held yesterday to review the scope of the phase two tasks. At this time, we're awaiting the final phase two budget number. Uh, phase two will provide us with the options for building, renovating and or contraction, and will also address redistricting options as well. Phase two will also provide us with cost estimates for this long-term plan. We have entered uh, budget season and work is now underway on the development of the 2019-2020 operating budget. We'll be engaging in further conversation around our budget's alignment to our strategic plan and the priorities necessary to maintain quality instructional programs for our students. And finally, as this is our only time together in the month of December, I'd certainly like to wish our students, families, and staff a very happy holiday season. Thank you. Great. Any questions for Michael? Any comments? Okay. Um, we do not have any action items tonight, so this meeting will get shorter. Um, we do have a presentation of our capital improvement plan update, and I did see Sally Katz. And Michael, are you going to be involved yes, in this? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Part of shared services. Good evening, Sally Katz, Director of Physical Services for the Town of Weathersfield. Um, this is a kind of a preliminary discussion of capital improvements um, going forward in what will be the fiscal year um, 1920 budget mm -hmm. um, and what we are planning if you look at the budget for this for this fiscal year the overall budget for capital improvements for the entire town including the schools was a little under nine hundred thousand dollars I've been told pre preliminarily that that number is approximately the same moving forward in this next fiscal year looking at the initial Collier's report on the condition of the buildings, along with some issues that we are engaged in right now. The proposed plan to move ahead on projects to submit for capital improvement monies are the replacement of the high crest portables, both units, the uh, replacement of the Charles Wright portable, there is a significant amount of work to be done on the stairs at Webb oh. and also the creation or potentially the creation of a paint program to be able to go in and paint classrooms and community rooms and other uh, hallways in the schools. Uh, up until now, for the past few years, due to budget constraints, the schools have not been on a painting rotation. And with uh, the collaboration of town staff, be able to hopefully uh, reinitiate that. That's wonderful. The 10 year capital plan, which I know that you all have from 1718, is not a document that we are setting aside and not looking at. However, these other projects are immediate. They are ones that we really feel coincide with what Colliers is talking about. 
as far as the conditions of the buildings and really meeting the educational needs of the students. Um, certainly the, the high crest portables are the number one consideration. We know that the portable at Charles Wright, while not in exactly the acute state that the high crest ones are, certainly are past their prime. And um, we also know that, as I said, there are some issues with the stairs at Webb. We were able to do some repairs this summer, but the main stairs facing Willow do need some work. And so those are really the, the main projects that um, I want to present to the Capital Improvement Committee um, and really narrowing it down to you know, those four and really be able to have um, a robust program moving forward. Understanding that this program, again, is not being cast mm -hmm. aside, but at this point in this juncture for this upcoming year, these other projects really, uh, we believe, take precedent. And I would certainly concur with that, Sally, given the fact that right now at Highcrest specifically, we're offline with those portables. We actually have them, them walled off. We had some significant leaking issues mm -hmm. earlier in the year. We were certainly concerned about mold, and you've seen this in some of the other districts in the state with mold being an issue. So we have them offline. So we definitely need to address those first mm -hmm. and foremost. Again, the idea here in the long-range plan, the, the Collier's plan gives us a really good picture of what these buildings need. Mm -hmm. um, Collier's was just out at Silas Dean wrapping up that particular piece, so we'll have a good picture from Collier's as to what we need for capital improvements for Silas Dean down the road. Um, you know, looking at this from a perspective of um, safety and security, one of the alternatives we're looking with safety and security, you know that's usually part of our capital improvement. Um, we have looked to get reimbursement from the state with, through a um, school safety and security grant that Mr. Even and uh, Mr. Kazaka are working on. So we're looking for ways, and again, this ties into our strategic plan, looking for supplemental ways to raise funds in times where the budgets are really tight. So that's where we'll, we'll go with regard to the safety and security piece. Okay. There's also two other issues, the replacement of the portable units. We're also looking and, and going to be working with an architect and submitting to the state for a, um, some percentage of reimbursement. The second thing is, again, in the Collier's report, they noted um, roofs for the schools. We have a very robust program with Tremco from the town. Um, we have a database which significantly discusses the conditions of all of the roofs um, on all of our buildings. And that is another program from my presentation for capital improvements for the town. We will be moving forward to try to, to be doing uh, some testing on the roofs to see if roofs are in uh, a state where they can be reconditioned. And that is a very, um, it's, it's a great program because it does have a long warranty at a um, significantly reduced cost from completely uh, changing out a roof. So roofs are not, while they're not going to be presented as part of the Board of Education capital improvements, they are still on my list of uh, projects to present when I for present the town side. So I don't want people to think that we are not paying attention to the roofs because roofing was a major aspect of that first presentation. Uh, we're just dealing with it in a slightly different way. Okay. Any questions for Sally? John? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I concur with uh, Sally and her report. Normally this, uh, we would, as a facilities and maintenance committee, you know, discuss this at a committee meeting. Um, however, with the, the demand of our portable classrooms and the less funds that we have to move forward in capital improvements, I think that you know, the, the staff has an idea where we're going. And I think that the priority was uh, for safety with the stairs at Webb, as well as for the ability to have classroom space mm -hmm. at our schools. So this is by no means uh, circumventing the committee. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a positive move where the uh, where Sally and Mike collaborated and basically got together uh, with you know what was an imperative need at this point. So I don't want anyone to think that the long range capital improvement. You know, Sally hit the nail on the head. We're, it's not going to sit on the shelf. We're there, but unfortunately, we have allowed things to just go to the side and. 
Um, thank you, Sally. Uh, I think we're, you. you know, we're we're moving in the right direction. Yes. Anyone else? I have a quick question. Oh, Chris? you go ahead, John. You want to go ahead? Go for it. We'll go down the line. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for your report. Uh, I just and I apologize if I missed this before. You talked about the ongoing painting. Uh, I'm assuming that's for the interior of all the schools. <clears throat> Is there a what did you look at in terms of price and timing if let's just say someone walked in with a checkbook right well right now there isn't actually a, a painting program in the schools it is unfortunately fell victim uh to budget cuts over the years we do have a staff painter uh we have a painter on staff with the town we have been able to do some painting at the schools uh, utilizing his services, what I would like to be able to do is utilize, utilizing town staff and maybe some summer help, be able to go into the schools and start hitting some of these classrooms um, during the summer months. It is difficult because the schools are used, and um, but again, that's scheduling, it's working it through, so it's really um, kind of a rejuvenation of a program which has not been able to happen over the past few years because of budget and because of the, of the well there must have been a cost for it before it became a non-issue i mean you have a general right. idea of what how much paint you need and how much you need to i mean how do they do you obviously have to pay staff to do it i mean well we would you utilize the, or anything like that we would utilize the town painter who is on his regular staff so we would not uh really be adding say a, an outside vendor um, and we need to extrapolate that a little bit more, looking at which classrooms, targeting which classrooms, measuring the classrooms, figuring out what um, amount of paint would need to go into that, um, and then figuring out a schedule over a number of years so that we would be able to get to where we want to be as far as a rotation. But we want to at least start the process of reintroducing the necessity to have a paint program in the buildings uh, instead of just having these one-offs that happen or walls happen because someone something's happened and it's marked up and so we paint a wall. We want to go in and systematically look at the buildings and be able to set up a program to be able to get some done each year. Sally, if I may, um, Dr. Pearson, our former superintendent, Dr. Lynn Pearson, um, we set up a program like that when mm -hmm. she was the superintendent. Mm -hmm. and in fact, uh, I don't know if the records go back that far, but it's not that long ago, maybe. 90s. <laughs> um, we'll certainly look at the At history. the end of the day, what we decided was exactly what you're saying. And in fact, the board decided that the buildings, whether we're painting it, are all going to be the same paint color. Mm -hmm. yes. They're not going to change color. There's not going to be brown in one and pink in another and green there we you know that was a long time ago so so we'd all have the same paint and we weren't running around looking for the same paint so i'm sure you've seen that in universities and other public affairs right and we also need to to be aware and um, i meet on a weekly basis with the assistant superintendent and, and staff to be able to identify rooms that are used in special needs if there are special needs programs that need to have different colors or different lighting want to be able to address that in a in a proactive way mm -hmm. anyone else john i had two questions uh what is the work the web stairs need you said it's the will street step steps there's been some spalling on this on the stairs and so there's been some cracks um, so we need to we need to address some of that. It's not right now. Um, we would not call it, it. It is they are safe. They get used. It's fine. But again, we want to get out ahead of some things as we're seeing some deterioration happening. We want to be able to go and fix it before it becomes a safety issue. So maintenance, not replacement. Correct. And second question: Is there any kind of a timeline on the portables? We're trying to fast track it as much as we can. Um, we are in discussions with an architect moving forward with that, um, utilizing his services and his knowledge of, of how to get these done because he has done it um, this type of work for other for other municipalities. Um, the goal would be to get them if 
everything goes according to plan, mm -hmm. up and running and available for the start of school in August. Okay. That's great, Sally. I appreciate be, you being so proactive because those schools are, you know, at a point that they're tired. We've talked yes, about this. Are. So now we're walking that fine line of how much do we fix them before mm -hmm. they're whatever our plan is, that's done to them. Um, and I appreciate your suggestions all the time. Um, we really are moving in the right direction. Yes, our students and our teachers, our administrators deserve um, comfortable and clean places and bright places yes. to be working in. So thank you. Yes. Thank you, it's been very, very good, a good process. And mm -hmm. I have to give a lot of credit to the superintendent and to everyone here to giving us the opportunity to make shared services work. Great. Anyone else? Thank you. Michael, all set? Thank, Thank you. you, Sally. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Okay, um, so we have board of ed meetings that were held, community and public relations committee. Ginger, would you speak to that? Certainly. Um, the community and public relations committee met on November 28th. After a brief review of the new Weathersfield Public Schools website, Mr. Emmett presented an overview of social media and print media procedures in the district. Um, there followed a preliminary discussion of the communications program that will need to be implemented in conjunction with any action following from the facilities and enrollment study. This will come in phase three of the study and will include assistance from Colliers. Um, it will be very important to keep the community in the loop about the reasons for any possible redistricting and building funds needed as part of this 10-year plan. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Ginger? That was a good meeting. Thank you. All right, and we have our special board of ed meeting. John Morse. Yes, uh, we met in special session on the 29th to address issues relating to one of our bargaining units who had a grievance. Um, we did not complete the hearing that day. We sent it back for some more information to be provided to us, and we'll reconvene at some point, convenient to everybody. Okay, great. Okay. And our CREC meeting. Ginger, you're on again. There we go. Um, the CREC Council met on December 5th. Several small changes were approved in the CREC budget to reflect new grants received. In addition, a resolution was passed to split the Division of Student Services into two components to reflect whether their programs needed to be HIPAA compliant or not. Uh, this relieves the programs that do not include a health care component from being under the HIPAA compliance umbrella. There was a, yet another long conversation about the proposed resolution regarding the sustainability of the magnet school system without full funding from the state legislature. Mm -hmm. There was quite a bit of pushback from council members regarding the lack of correct budget detail and the director's assertion that the magnet school system has nothing to cut. Um, action on the resolution was again pushed down the road with further discussion to be held in January. Thank you. Any questions for Ginger? I have concerns, Ginger, because I, if they have nothing I, to cut. I yeah. think we all have concerns. It, yeah. um, you know, they, they realize that they need to provide us with a bit more information before they ask us to stand up and say, you know, this is what we want to do. Um, but they, um, I think we're a little surprised that there was um, as much pushback as there was. Okay. Thank you. And then Chris, Policy and Planning Committee. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, we met last night <clears throat> to discuss a few things, well, chiefly a transportation, excuse me, <clears throat> Transportation policy proposal, which came back after some discussion review, uh, we proposed in that um, new policy to provide uh, transportation for kindergarten students. Uh, we're going to do that through a cluster system of pick pickups, um, requiring uh, people to obviously be there, uh, the appropriate people to be there for the pickups of the kids. That will be uh, provided to the board in our first reading and our first meeting in January. Uh, we also discussed uh, our cell, a proposed cell phone policy. Uh, superintendent provided us with about eight examples of cell phone policies around the country. Also one from my, our, my good friends at the ACLU provided a, a 
an interesting op, uh, proposal, which was, um, I think, very interesting and, and very inclusive. And uh, the superintendent's going to um, bring us back uh, some ideas the next meeting, uh, taking different, uh, different concepts from different programs, and we'll finally get the, start to bring that into uh, focus. And obviously, we, once we do, we're going to have a very aggressive and thorough outreach to the community about what we hope to achieve with this policy. And that was, uh, I think that was it. Thank Any you. questions for Chris? Great. All right. Um, is there any unfinished business on the board as we finish up this year? Okay. Anyone wishing to make a public comment, come on up to the podium and please state your name and address. And may I remind you that we have a five-minute limit. Nobody? Okay. Any board comments? Go ahead, John. Happy holidays, and I was nice this year. <laughs> <laughs> Not naughty. <laughs> you were nice when? <laughs> I'm sitting next to you, Chris. <laughs> I'll be thanking your next year. Happy holidays, board members and community. Thanks, John. Anyone else? Okay, well, as this is the final time we meet in 2018, the board wishes to send out holiday greetings to everyone. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and for anyone I missed, Happy Festivus. I beat you, John, this year. Um, perhaps a more appropriate wish, though, for all of us is peace on earth. Um, the board also wants to wish you all a very happy new year. It's a tradition to make resolutions for the new year, and I'm pleased that the board has made several important resolutions for the 2018, or 2019 year. First, we resolved to be determined about forward progress for our system. This resolution includes our continued work on following our strategic plan, our roadmap to an innovative and progressive school system. We resolve to have a 21st century model and using our leader leader model and all staff, which will be fully implemented by the end of the school year. And also we resolve that our forward thinking PD, our professional development, gives our teachers coaches and will be fully utilized as they work with our 21st century curriculum. And third, the board also resolved that there will be monitoring of standardized testing looking to add more time for project learning, authentic learning, and simply put the joy of teaching and learning. And today I had the opportunity to be at the Webb School in their fourth grade, and the students did an incredible project on natural disasters. But it included technology, collaboration, um, just project learning that brings it all together. And as I said to many of the students, this is what's expected of you as you get older in your school years and into the business world is giving presentations. They did an outstanding job. And finally, we resolve that we will all continue to communicate and cooperate in the spirit of learning from each other. So we wish all administrators, teachers, staff, students, parents, all of Weathersfields a very happy and healthy new year, and may your resolutions be as successful as I know ours will be. So thank you. And Eden, tell us about life at the high school, and we'd love to know more about those cell phones. Oh boy, well I don't think I can top you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, well, cell phones, I mean that's definitely become an issue. Once you mentioned it, I was like, uh-oh. There's definitely been a lot more cell phone usage in the building, unfortunately, and teachers are becoming a bit more lenient on it. So it's been hard to combat with, but some students are still conscious of it, some aren't, but teens. <laughs> I don't know what to say about them. Anyway, so homecoming was on Friday. It went incredibly well. I heard there was over 400 students, which is a lot. That was very impressive. And, you know, it's obviously December in Weathersfield because there's a million concerts going on. Tonight is the band concert, which we're unfortunately missing. Directed by Mr. Bowles, it's supposed to be a great concert. I wish them all well. And on Thursday is the choral concert directed by Scott Rio. It's at 7, and I hope to see you all there. That's a good one. And then auditions for the WHS production of Mary Poppins, directed by Jeff Rotes, are coming up, which I look forward to as well. Very nice. Any questions for Eden? 
Okay, thank you. So any other comments? All right, if there are none, um, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and good night and happy holidays and happy new year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.